G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're going to be looking at the system that some of us love to love and some of us hate to hate and some of us love to hate. Um, in this case, ISO 19650, one of the data management standards that's emerged in order to manage how we exchange and manage and contain information on projects, specifically with the context of the AEC or built environment focus. Um, so in this case, we're going to be looking at a system that's entailed in ISO 19650 Part 2, uh, the British National Annex. Um, in this case, we're trying to capture a revisioning system that supports a few pieces of metadata. And lately, Autodesk in Revit 2022 has revised the revisioning system in order to achieve these requirements, which is great. So I'll show you how to do it. But to recap on what the requirements are for those that aren't aware, in ISO 19650 Part 2, we're required to firstly revision with an alpha character, this can either be a P or a C. Preliminary is P and contractual is C, representing the document uh, status in this case. Status is probably not the best choice of words because there's another separate section of status which indicates the, well, the suitability, I guess. It could be a confusing word. Uh, but in this case, we'll just call it the revision the drawing has reached. Um, after that, there's gonna be a two digit numerical character. In this case, this represents which version of that particular alpha status we are at. So P01, for example, is the first formal issue of the preliminary version of that information. After that, sometimes you might have two more characters separated by a dot. This indicates the work in progress uh, issue of that document heading towards the next preliminary or contractual issue. So it is quite a complex system to capture in a Revit revisioning system, especially prior to Revit 2022. It's almost impossible actually. Um, there's a lot of really bad workarounds we had to use for the last few years. So, you know, you know thanks Autodesk. We really did uh, struggle there for a bit, but at the same time, thanks for giving us a system that does actually work. Um, so in this video, I'll briefly break down how you can modify your revisioning standards and also just some considerations of how you might need to work in order to maintain some of those preliminary work in progress revisions as well. Anyway, let's get started. So we're going to begin uh, just under view and we're going to go to our revisions, revisions tool. And the, the main thing that has changed in Revit 2022 is we now have this customized numbering feature. So usually when you pick a revision in Revit, you'll be picking from an alphanumeric, a numeric or no sequence um, for the revision. So we can also now introduce additional series to our revisioning sequence. Now you might think at the moment that what we're gonna do is just create a preliminary and a contract set. Not quite, but let's just do that anyway and see what limitations we run into. So if I make a new series and I just call this preliminary, well, I can say that I do have two minimum digits and I start at one, which will be 01. Um, and I can also add a prefix of P. Now we could add a suffix, but there isn't really any reason to in this case. I can also add a series for uh, contracts with two minimum digits and a prefix of C. So at this point, we do have two series that can be used for the major milestones in projects. Um, so in this case, if I just remain with um, project-based revisioning for now, and I add a revision or two, the first one I'll make preliminary, and we can see that it's P01, and if I do another one, I can see that it's P02. So this system does understand how to manage primary revisions. So we could use this as one system, and we also have a system we can use for contract. And these understand that as they fall after one another, they just climb up the major revisioning system. But what do we do when we run into the sub revisions that have the .01, .02, .03, etc.? Well, this is a little bit more difficult. So we do need more revision numbering sequences to do this. Um, and the challenge we're gonna run into here is we are gonna need these to actually be locked in to their P number or their C number. So in this case, I'm gonna create a new series called preliminary one. And in this case, we again have two minimum digits. And in this case, we'll start at one. And our prefix in this case is instead gonna be P01 dot. So this one's a little bit different. And I'm just gonna create maybe two more series in this case. So we can see in this case, we are definitely running into a very different sort of series here. Um, and you'll see sort of why I'm doing this pretty soon. And to be honest, it is a reflection that maybe the system isn't quite what we need it to be yet, um, but it's definitely much more workable than what we had before. So we have three 
sub-preliminary series and I'm going to make three sub-contract series. So on a project where you get up to say work in progress sub-issue 48 or something like that, you're going to have a lot of revisions potentially if you follow this system, um, which might be problematic. But I'm just going to call this contract 01, two digits starting with co one dot. And of course, as you expect, we'll have two more. I can just duplicate the series numbering. And in this case, we'll do CO2 and CO3. So what do we do with these ones? Well, how do we keep these in, in a relative order? Well, what I'm going to do first is just put numeric and alphanumeric to the end. So I'm just going to put a Z underscore, which should put them at the bottom alphabetically. Now, if I introduce more revisions, but this time I use the work in progress revisions instead, uh, let's use preliminary one. You can see that in this case, if I have successive preliminaries in a row, they do understand that they, in this case, will need to stack sequentially. But in this case, the user does have to nominate which specific preliminary revision is being issued. So on a project where you have different drawings going out for different stages, um, at the same time, this may be quite complex and you may need to use multiple revisions in order to dictate which drawings are on P01.01 .01 and which ones are on P.02.03. To be honest, that's probably a good thing because usually they're, they're going to be completely separate issues to each other and you would usually use different revisions for them anyway. But what we're going to do now is switch to per sheet, which is going to change how this works altogether. Um, what I'm also going to do is probably just add, in this case, um, some contract revisions. So I've got 01, 01, and 0202. Um, in this case, I'll just add some contract revisions as well. Contract 1, contract 1, contract 2, contract 2. Um, now I am, in this case, just going to uh, name these uh, so I can actually see what they are. So I'm just going to call, I'll just call this P, just because I know that these revisions are just meant to be C and P. Um, there's nothing really specific about them besides that. As well as this, I'm going to call this one PO1 and PO2. Now, obviously, you usually probably put more description in these and the dates would be more relevant. In this case, I've just left them very generic. But let's just go and see how we could manage this revisioning process sheet by sheet. So let's say that this drawing is currently preliminary work in progress. So it's going to be P0101. So the first revision you would apply in this case would need to belong to the P01 uh, type. So if we do apply just one P01 revision, um, great. We get the P0101, and our revision in this case should reflect that as well. Now I'm just gonna add a revision parameter that isn't currently one in this title block. And I'm just gonna get rid of this checked by field and instead just make this the current revision so that we can see uh, what we're dealing with here as the actual drawing revision. But we can see that we do see the proper revision um, as per the ISO 19650 requirements. Um, if I do add another preliminary 01 revision, we're going to see now that we go to P01.02. So this is correct. This is how we would want our revisions to climb. Um, and from here, if we had, say, a P02, well, the challenge you are going to face is that you are going to have to be in a respective sequence. So these are going to have to make sense in the order you not only apply them to the sheets, but that they appear in the project. So this is definitely one challenge you are gonna come across um, with this system in that you sort of have to capture, I'm um, just gonna move this down. You sort of have to capture the sequence that your drawings are going out in respect to your project and your sheets potentially. So this might be one challenge that we face because um, it really, again, is gonna be all based on the order of the revisions in the revisioning tab itself, not just on the sheets. But if I do have a preliminary revision that comes after the work in progress issues, um, we can see in this case, it does in this case switch to P01. So this is essentially how you could manage uh, preliminary revisions. Um, now, again, you would need to really internally manage this process quite carefully in sequence, but you can see that you can manage interim and formal submission revisions in this way, as long as they're in the, the right order in your revisioning table. Now you're gonna have lots of different drawings potentially going out at different times on different revisions. So you're gonna have a lot of sequence buried inside your revision table potentially. Um, but as long as you have the right type of revision, so in this case, a preliminary one, two, three, or an overarching preliminary revision, you should at least get the right sequences on your sheets. But you would need to be really careful that you don't go and interrupt this sequencing. Um, say someone goes back and moves a revision all the way back to the start and then applies that. It's obviously gonna get buried in the overarching sequence of the revisions themselves. 
So it's a little bit confusing, but I think that's really the only way that this system could really work uh, with a lot of understanding from the project team on how this works. So for example, let's just say we're looking at one succession of, of revisions. Well, in this case, we'd probably want to put our contract after our CO1. And again, this is just respective to the drawing series, but you can see now that we can also introduce a secondary sequence to these as well. Um, I can also go CO2, noting that if I do take out, uh, in this case, my first C, um, it doesn't quite make sense because we have a CO2 interim revision, but it's, but it's never been issued for uh, a C revision type before. So you wouldn't logically have that first issue if you're only having work in progress before that. So it could potentially be audited using something like Dynamo to detect when the sequence is missing a key component in that series uh, series breakdown of revisions. But that's essentially, I guess, the way that you could potentially take advantage of this new system. Um, just keep in mind <clears throat> that you definitely will need to communicate amongst your wider team on how they should create revisions and also manage them in sequence. So obviously a PO2 is meant to come after a PO1, you wouldn't want to jump forward to PO3 um, in the interim revisions and then use the, the next P because that's obviously just going to default to PO2. Now one other optional system you can use, and this is on a project where you know exactly how many work in progress issues you're allowed to have, is to use purely alphanumeric sequences. In this case, if we go to numbering, we can just duplicate the alphanumeric sequence. And in this case, um, we're just going to call this preliminary, preliminary, preliminary climbing. So we, we're going to dictate the entire preliminary revision set manually. So in this case, we say, first of all, PO101, let's say we only have three work in progress revisions between each set. Now we say PO2, PO102, PO103, and then we have PO1. Now we can take all of these, copy them, and now we're just on the PO2 system. And then we're on PO2. And you can obviously just keep copying these um, a set at a time until you've filled out your entire predicted preliminary revision schedule. Now the problem with this is obviously if someone changes their mind partway into the project, let's say you need like a fourth work in progress set, it's going to ruin the entire system. So I think that the system is definitely much riskier. Um, you would have to make sure that your project is absolutely predictable for how many of these you're going to issue. But I really don't think this is probably the safest system, just given that most projects have fairly unpredictable revision cycles. One final option that you could potentially use is for each work in progress milestone, you maintain a work in progress revision instead. In this case, you can see I've created one for work in progress stage one. In this case, uh, the digits that we're controlling are going to be the 01, 02, 03, 04. Um, but in this case, it is suffixed by the dot 01. So you'd obviously have one for the dot 01, one for the dot 02, one for the dot 03, etc. And during each phase, you would only use each of these revisions once. So this is definitely a little bit more of a complicated system, I will be honest. Um, in this case, I probably will need to just show you how this is intended to work at the project level. Um, so this one would be 02, this one would be 03. And I'm going to switch back to per project just to keep things clear. So in this case, what I could do is say preliminary work in progress 1, preliminary work in progress 2. Um, now in this case, see it doesn't quite actually work. Where's, here we go. So you can see that now it understands that the trailing digit is actually the one that's climbing instead. Um, again, if we use work in progress 1, work in progress 2, you can see that now it understands the sequence that it's occurring in instead because we're only using one work in progress 1 for each phase. Um, note that if you do make a mistake and use work in progress 2, it's going to throw the whole thing out of order. So this is potentially a slightly more risky system. Um, it just really depends which of the three approaches you think will suit your workflows best. Um, I feel this is probably slightly too risky. I do still prefer to really intentionally nominate the, the preliminary phase that you're dealing with. I think it's definitely safer um, and probably clearer to the user which phase the current revision associates itself to. So there we go, um, a new system that gets us a little bit closer to achieving ISO requirements inside a Revit environment. There's obviously still a lot to go, especially in terms of achieving Kobe compliance and also the IFC data management standards, which are currently very, very complex in a Revit model. It is possible to generate an almost valid IFC in Revit, but my God, the amount of effort you need in 
order to do it, it's almost not worth the time you invest sometimes. At the same time as well, um, I do know they are working on the IFC internal requirements of the software, and I will be keen to see what we get in the future in order to help us more effectively generate valid models that support BIM Level 2, as is required in many countries such as the UK. Anyway, I hope that helps you, um, and if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.